when you're naive, you don't have fear. You don't know you can't, <laughs> and so you do. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Scream Dreams, the nightmares that shaped us, where we sit down and talk with your favorite filmmakers and creatives about their nightmares and the things that actually terrify them. I'm Catherine Corcoran. And I'm James A. Janice. And today we have a very, very special guest. We are so <laughs> excited to welcome her. You probably know her work as an actor in films like E.T. and Cujo, but she's also an incredible healer and mother and just amazing, amazing woman. Dee Wallace, welcome. Welcome <laughs> to Scream Dreams. Thank you. Thank Great you so, to be here. Thanks for joining us. This is like so fun. I think I don't think I've ever had someone on the show that is more beloved than you. <laughs> oh for my like, gosh! Seriously. What a nice thing to say. Seriously, well, you know, we've everybody had a lot of fell people. in love with the mom and ET. <laughs> so well, I have referred to just... you. I have referred to you as uh, America's mom in the eighties. I just yeah. feel like there oh, there were so many times when you were such that loving, nurturing. Yeah character that I, I know that role very well and yeah. I like that role yeah <laughs> I think the best role in my life really was being a mom yeah it, are you saying in real life yeah was, yeah mm -hmm. yeah I absolutely. recently and I you may have gotten asked about it a few times but I recently saw you tell the story about your daughter and uh, Peter Jackson and I was just like so blown away by that would you mind sharing that well that which one are you referring to the, the one with after would your husband had passed. yeah yeah well we were uh we were in new zealand and um i was doing the frighteners with peter jackson and my husband uh had a heart attack and gabrielle my daughter and my nanny had just gone back home they had been down to be with me and so I flew home, and they did the angioplasty, and everything was fine. And he said, go back. I'm fine. I'm going home tomorrow. So I flew back to finish the film, and three days later, a blood clot hit his heart, and he died. And my little girl found him. Oh, God. Uh, she asked my nanny if she could go in and wake Daddy up because it was 11 o'clock. And he was on the floor, and she came back and said, well, Daddy fainted. Uh, and Kristen went in, and yeah. And so they called me. I literally had been back, I think, three days. You know, it's halfway yeah. across the world. Yeah. And um, so I got on another plane and flew back and did his service, and packed up my daughter and my nanny and went back to finish the film. Peter said to me, D, we never thought you'd be back. Yeah. They had planned out how to shoot somebody from behind and mm -hmm. cover all of it. Yeah. And because I did have, you know, that long black wig uh -huh. on, so it would have been easier to dress somebody to cover me. But I went back, and they just all... And here come the tears. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to just take it off. No. I just knew about the flights. I didn't realize. No, no. It's okay. Um, they just all embraced her with so much love. And um, I had to go back and do the flying scene mm -hmm. in the harness. And she was just fascinated with it that I could fly like Peter Pan. <laughs> So they built her a little harness uh -huh. so she could go up and fly. And Michael J. Fox um, played Foursquare with her outside. And everybody just rallied around and, you know, got us through. How old was she at the time? Uh, six. Oh, man. Wow. That's... You know, and I, I went in to settle up all the flights, which – probably would have been more than my salary back then and and the bookkeeper said no this is peter's gift he's taking care of all of it for you oh, man. that's the kind of guy he is yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean to kick it off so heavy. i knew about the flying <laughs> i'm so sorry but i but i also think it's just such a testament to like 
how it must have been to be not only the mother you had to be in that moment for your daughter, but also, like he said, kind of the mother to all of us, like where you were committed to fulfilling the, these these roles. Well, you know, you can either lay down and die or roll over and be a victim or get up and go on with your life and create your life. And my mother uh, always taught me to do that. I had a really good role model. My father committed suicide. So I got to watch her raise everybody up and go on. Yeah. You know, so it's, um, it's kind of an inborn strength, I think I, I have from being in a family that needed to call on that. Did you, did you often think of your mom when playing these these roles? These? I didn't. No? Which is so weird. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Somebody asked me that about a year and a half ago, and I went, I didn't base these roles on my mom. I, You know, I... I did, but I didn't consciously, consciously yeah. at all. I'm sure it was more of a matter of the fact that she influenced you as a person and well, then you took yeah. just yeah, who you were and into I, that role. Yeah, and I got to witness what it was like for a real person to play all those roles Yeah, when you had to save your kids, yeah. which she did often. And how many siblings do you have? Like, how, how big of a family? I had an you? older brother, six mm-hmm. years older, and a younger brother, six years younger. So, yeah, three kids to, to take yeah. care of. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Sounds like a very strong woman. Yeah, yes. she was. What, what was the transition then? I guess, it, I, it to me, it seems very much like such a mother. You come from a great mother. You are such a great mother. Naturally, you'd be an amazing healer and want to work with other people. But what was the transition into that for you it's really interesting i used to channel as all children do uh when i was little um i woke up one night and my i was very very close to my paternal grandmother who really kind of helped to raise me because mom had to work all the time and i woke up and i went something's wrong at grandma's house And I went in and woke my mom up. My mom was such a saint. She had to be on a bus at 7 a.m., right? So she gets up and she calls Grandma and nobody answers. So we got in the car and we drove over to Grandma's house and the cat had gotten up on the stove and turned all the burners on and they hadn't lit. Now, whether Grandma would have been okay the next morning, who knows? But I just used to get messages like that all the time. My father visited me as a light in my room uh, after his suicide. And um, you know how I knew it was real? Is that I wasn't afraid. Oh, interesting. You know, in the movies you would be afraid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was, I just knew it was him and it was so peaceful. And he said, button nose, it's not your fault. I'm fine. I'm happy. You go on and and have a happy life. That's your job. Yeah. And I've had a huge amount of tragedy in my life. Uh, And I learned, I I learned I didn't want to be the tragedy that I wanted to be victorious Mm -hmm. over the tragedy. And the thing that people get so challenged with is that they don't think they have a choice. They think that destiny just happens and their creation happens out there and it all happens right here. Everything you want to create, you have to be first and then the universe and everything in the universe can find that and match it look six specialists told me i'd never have a baby i said thanks for sharing (laughs) got a different plan got me took me six years but she just brought my first grandbaby in (laughs) congrats and you know i grew up in kansas i'd never been out of kansas in my life 
um, said, I taught a year of high school, and I said, I'm going to go to New York and be an actress. And everybody, except my mom, <laughs> everybody said, you don't know anybody. Nobody knows you. Are you crazy? You're never going to. Well, from the time I went to New York to the time I started in E.T. was a little under seven years. Wow. Wow, that's so quick. It, yeah. yeah. You <laughs> think? starting a Spielberg film. I yeah. know, right? <laughs> you know? But I, I'm a big believer in naivete because when you're naive, you don't have fear. You just go, you know, it, it's, um, oh, what's being there? It's Present, kind of like yeah. being there yeah. or Forrest Gump. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. you don't know you can't, <laughs> and so you do, <laughs> you know? And... Um, it's really magical when you live it. It's yeah. really, really magical. We talk about that a lot on the show, how like fear is taught. You don't oh, know to sure. be afraid of something. We've talked about our friends. Um, you worked with Chrissy this week. Yeah, yeah. I um, did. Talk, Chrissy yeah. Yeah. So her little girl, Elle, loves like monsters. Oh, my God. We were done. <laughs> okay. That kid. <laughs> the cutest kid. She is out of this world yeah. literally about yeah. horror yeah. films and yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, she'll she'll take out all her dolls and amongst them will be Leatherface and yeah. it's, it's, it's great. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, but Yeah, but we again, had a good time. But if you don't know to be afraid of something Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's completely taught. So Exactly. To her, why would but this look any different? Most of us that were raised in the Midwest and the South especially mm -hmm. are taught that um, God doesn't love you if you have a lot of money. That's a fear. Mm -hmm. Well, the first two gods in your life, mommy and daddy, are teaching you this. So it must be true. Mm -hmm. And look, all you have to do is look at your life and see where your life isn't showing up the way you want it to. And then... Make a list of all your childhood beliefs and teachings or what was modeled in front of you. Mm -hmm. And you'll see why you're hitting the wall and can't create it. You'll see it. How do you get past that? Oh, so you were going to ask the same thing? Uh, something similar, yeah. <laughs> you, well, okay. So again, energy, this is science. This is brain science. Okay. Energy... Everything's energy. There isn't anything that isn't energy. Energy's neutral. There's no good energy, no evil energy. Energy's neutral, and it has to be directed into manifestation. If you don't do it consciously, it will take its direction, like we talked about, from anything that gets its attention. So... Be conscious of what you want and direct you and your energy to, first of all, choose it, commit to it, feel love around it, and then ask the universe to play with you. See, most people, let's take money again, for example, because so many people know that example, um, they don't like money because they don't have enough of it. The way my channel phrases it is if you want something, love it more. <laughs> Whatever you want, love it more. Love is an incredibly powerful tool that we think is just this namby-pamby little relationship thing that we play around with. <laughs> it really is... The creation of everything. I'm rolling. You know, I I really want Barbara Crampton here. I really want Barbara Crampton here, and it's funny you mentioned her. Did you see her in a in a in a vision, in a dream? Oh, Barbara's with me all the time. Oh, she is. Yeah. It's funny, she I, follows me everywhere. Really? Yeah. 
So have you been on this set too every time she appears? Yeah, and you didn't know I was here, did you? <laughs> <laughs> it's two women who can just miraculously... Woo! Ouch! Here I am again! Oh my, my goodness! God. God. I love you! I love you! I just saw you and we spent all weekend I together know. at a convention. It was so fun! We whined, we dined. Yes. Oh, it's wonderful. Great. And, you know, I came to know you actually on the convention circuit because we have the That's same true. manager. And I remember the first time I had dinner with you, you were at the convention and I was there, and there was a lot of people at the table. And I don't think we actually sat near one another, but I remember watching you and going, oh, that's Dee Wallace. She's <laughs> like, you know, I've told you this before. Cujo is like amazing. It's like Thank one of my, you. it is my favorite performance. It's my of favorite I know. film that I've done. I, I know. Thank you. Because we've talked about it. But I was like, that's Dee Wallace. Like, y and, Anyway, I was sitting over there listening, and your personality and who you are as a person and your being is so bright Aww. and so yes. full. Aww. And I remember I sitting there going, that's Dee Wallace, like, that's the real person. Look at her. She's like kind of an amazing person, but I, <laughs> and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know you really well then. This was n a few years ago, maybe like eight years ago or something. And I just, we just didn't really connect at that time. But then it was over time that I've seen you at conventions that I feel like we've become friends and I've really connected oh, with yeah. you. And we spent a lot of time together and yeah. talking about our lives and our kids and, you know, just what's meaningful yeah. um, to us. So anyway, I, I just I'm wanna... so glad. <laughs> Me too. I'm no, so I appreciate glad. you. And, you know, I, I, I know a lot about what you do with conscious creation, mm -hmm. but sitting there and, you know, I've never come on to do a private or anything like that, and that's a <laughs> watching. Um, but I, just watching all of you talk about this and you guys listening, I got so much out of that. Oh, good. I mean, oh, good, I, I do think I'm a positive person anyway. Oh, for sure. And I think that I do think about things that I want and I don't think oh I negatively but we all get caught in that mm -hmm. and so this was so great for me personally it's a really good reminder oh. mm -hmm. just yeah. you know oh, that we have to be positive happy. thank you yeah so thank you anyway so glad you're here <laughs> and um, this is the side barb so we are going to do something with you that I, you know I get to kind of do with the guests mm -hmm. but Catherine usually is the one that comes up with what we're going to do and she came up with a good thing, along with Bob Portal, our producer, what we're going to do today. And we thought Bob. since... <laughs> Bob's our... Um, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> um, Bob and I produce movies together, so we produce Pseudo Flash and Glorious and Jacob's Wife, so Bob's my partner. Um, and uh, because of who you are and what you do, we thought that we would talk about our dreams, like each of us would have a dream and then you would interpret it for us. Okay. If you don't mind. Yeah. And actually- My channel will interpret it. Your okay. channel will. Yeah. Yeah. So did you guys write yours down or did you, did no, you have no. one? But I, I, I've got one. I don't know, know why one. I wrote, you got know what? I just mentioned earlier. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I wrote it down because, and we've talked about this before on the show, I do, rem I do remember my dreams pretty okay. much and I, I dream a lot. But last night when I went to sleep, I thought, oh, what dream am I gonna talk about? And I. I, I said to myself, okay, I have to dream something that I'm <laughs> gonna tell Dee. See? So she directed herself. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did, right. I directed myself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna dream something. So what happened in the morning was I set my alarm for, I don't know, 7.30, I think. And so I woke up at about 6.30 and I didn't have a dream. And I said, oh, no, I gotta go back to sleep because I have, a dr I have to dream something for Dee. So <laughs> like I'm going you left back the house without your keys, and you're like, "Oh, gotta go back and grab them real fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get back to sleep." So real I fast. went back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I dreamed something, and then I wrote it down mm -hmm. because I wanted to make sure that I had it. You know, I didn't forget it because you know how when you get up and you get the coffee and you go around the house, you That's just forget right, it. Yeah. So I wrote it down. So okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I had been with um, I had been with uh, Bonnie. And, and Judy last night um, shopping, but so they were they started in the dream, but I'm gonna cut to the middle of the dream because <laughs> what happened was I I was staying in 
um, a house with my sister, her son and wife, and the t and their two kids. And we were all, and we were, actually, no, they weren't staying with me. They were staying, I was staying somewhere else, but they were staying in a room. Trying to follow this, you know. <laughs> Okay. I'm, I'm going to cut to the middle of the dream because it was like a two-part. Okay. I'm going to cut to the middle of the dream. I left my sister and all the kids, and I was trying to get home. So as I was trying to go home after visiting them, I went to a shopping place that was like a market, and this market comes up in my dreams a lot. And there's always two or three shops in the market that I'm trying to find that I really like. Okay. But I can't return to them, and I'm always looking for them, and I and I can't find them. So then I decided to get on this bus to drive me home. So I got on this bus, and I realized that the bus wanted to take me to Randolph, Vermont, which is a town that's near where I'm from. <laughs> and I and I said to the bus driver. I don't want to go to Randolph, Vermont. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I don't want to go there again. Get me off this bus. I'm not going there. And so he stopped the bus and I got off. Then I got in my car and I was trying. You just happened to be there. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And <laughs> I was happened to be there to go home. And I was on a stretch of road that I'm frequently on in my dreams. And I don't know how to get home. I don't know where it is. Hmm. And I always think in my mind, well, it's either this way or it's that way. So this happens to me all the time. I'm going to go that way and see if that's the way because I don't remember. And if that's not the way, I can go the other way. So it's okay. And then that was pretty much it. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. There's a lot in, okay. So everything in the dreams you. Yeah, that I heard you say. Yeah. Everything in the in the dream is you. So there was so much, Barbara. I'm trying to remember. So you're you're on your way and you go to this shopping mall. Is that the first part of it? Yeah. Okay. And there are three stores that I want to return to and I can't I can't find them anymore. Okay. Yeah. So the shopping mall's you. Yeah. The three stores are you and you can't get back to the part of you that you want to get back to. Oh. And then you go back to Randolph, which is where you're from, which is you. And you don't want to go back to you. Right? Right. I don't. Yeah. Okay. So we have a conflict, don't we? There's part of Barbara that wants to go to the stores and find herself. And there's a part of Barbara that doesn't want to go to Randolph and find herself. Hmm. So now I wish I had my pendulum because what part of you do you are you conflicted about mm -hmm. yeah do you know what it is oh yeah I mean I'm always in a conflict about uh, just work and home you know and okay you know, so what yeah. do you want what do I want uh, I want my career and I want to come I, I want what you want I want a you know big part in a movie and I want to have a part that fulfills me and that I feel great about. And I want to mm -hmm. be creative with other creatives and feel amazing. And where's the home? Where's the home? Yeah, because that's mm -hmm. what you're conflicted about. Where's the what home? What you want mm -hmm. is a balance mm -hmm. where you have a beautiful home life yeah. that's fulfilling with your husband and mm -hmm. a successful career. I think that's it. 
which yeah. makes you mm -hmm. one whole barber. I think that's true. I think I want both. And sometimes I feel like I have to have either or. No. You know, but that's I, a belief. That's right. That is a belief. Yeah. So I'm I going right both. to your mom when you were little. How did your mom teach you that belief? <laughs> yeah, well, you don't have to say it's it, but you got it. Okay. Oh my God. So, so, what my channel teaches is that we pick our parents, we pick our parents, usually, to come in to learn what we don't want. So that we can oh know clearly what we do. <laughs> oh, I the baba! Give you a hug, I know. <laughs> oh. Thank I love you. you. Thank you. Love you. Thank oh you. my gosh. Okay. Next. Like next. Oh my well, God. I hope <laughs> yours is shorter. <laughs>There's, I, I, it keeps, I just keep thinking about it. I had this dream that I was in like a desert and there was like, um, there was a mass shooting and all the people that were there, including some of my friends died, but I survived because I hid and I felt, okay. and I got out from where I hid and the person was gone and I felt like all this guilt. Yeah. It was your fault. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the desert you. Mm-hmm. And all your friends are you. Mm -hmm. So there are parts of you that are vulnerable with no cover out in the world. And there's you that's hiding. And The only thing that you experience when you come out of hiding this part of yourself to keep you safe, you're in fear that you will hurt other people. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what do you want? Wow. <laughs> Um, I think no, I... No, don't, don't start it with I think. I want... I want to be able to be myself and for that to be okay mm -hmm. and enough. And who's the only person that can make it okay? Me. Yeah. Do you know what part you're hiding? I don't know, actually, sometimes. Anybody have a heavy necklace? This isn't heavy enough, I don't think. Let me get this off, hold on, and get this. Okay, I'm balanced, switch. Part of hers, give me a song, any song that pops in. Um, Brick in the Wall by Pink Floyd, <laughs> we talked about it earlier. Okay. It's the part of you, it's your little girl, baby. It's your little girl that's always afraid she's going to do something wrong. Yeah. Does this resonate or not? Yeah, it does. I, <laughs> okay. Um. It actually started at the moment of conception. Do you know... <clears throat> Do you know where your mother's 
mindset was at conception? A little, yeah. Don't want to share it, huh? They no. listen to this podcast. Yeah, okay, that's, <laughs> that's fine. But there was an energy within your mom that goes, oh, I don't know if this is right. I don't know if this is okay. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe this isn't, yeah. And y we pick up all that energy. We, we don't understand it. We can't verbally define it but we get it and we get the beliefs behind it. Mm -hmm. So what you want is to know that you can go out and be brave in the world and be everything that you are and everyone is safe and secure in the world when you do that. Yeah. Is there anything higher? No. Tell me if that doesn't resonate. No, <laughs> that that really resonated for okay. sure. Next. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> uh, I had like a two-parter dream, so I'll just go with the second part because I feel like I got a good grasp no, on the first No, actually, the channel wants to go with the first part. Oh, I mean, I, I feel like I know what's happening with the first part. Uh, that's a true statement. What do you mean? You do. I do. I do know what's happening with okay. the first part, yeah. That's what, okay, now we can go to the second part. Okay, yeah. They just want you to know. Oh, yeah, I know. That you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so the second part of the dream, I was leaving a place, and I left, and my childhood dog, which was like a mixed terrier named Holly, she was with me, and just not on a leash, but just came with me, and she hopped in the car with me, and so I get in the car, and I'm trying to leave a parking lot like a big uh, parking lot maybe for a, a hospital or another big building and I go to an exit and I find out that it's blocked out uh, that I can't leave that way so I have to like back up and then as I'm turning around uh, I start to drive back from where I came but now all of a sudden it's a roller coaster track and I get like halfway up and the car stops and I have to for some reason I am able to to grab the rails of the roller coaster track with my arms and push it and uh kind of like how barbara said there's two ways splitting off and i choose one and i i go too fast and it falls off and my dog who is still in the car flies out of the the car and i i see her hit the pavement and then i woke up from that because that sucked okay but, yeah. so you're the car you're you you're the blocked entrance exit mm -hmm. uh you're the roller coaster, <laughs> and you're the dog. Mm -hmm. Which represents your child. That's a big yes. <clears throat> That's the fear. The fear is that you're always going to go the wrong way and the thing you love really gets hurt or killed did you lose somebody when you were little uh i mean i lost all my grandparents pretty young but i wasn't super is that where we're going them. yeah we're going who are you close to um I am told that when I was really young, I was close to my, my dad's dad, but it was so yeah. young that's hard for me to remember. Uh, yeah, but it's not hard for your little inner child to remember. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you guys, they're running the show, our little kids, and it's usually three years old, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. For you, it was conception, but <clears throat> it's usually around three years old and my purse isn't in here no damn it <laughs> uh, um, I think your purse was in here wait what happened to it oh we here it, it is out. oh yeah. good oh I I'm sorry to do this but nope. but I need to go to a core belief I have this sheet that I work with because it'll be more this page here one through five, one, two. 
Yeah, this fear is keeping you from acknowledging to yourself what you really want. If I go there, I'll get blocked. If I go there, I'll end up on a road I can't. If I go there, somebody gets hurt. If I go there, I better not go there. So you're holding yourself back from what's your greatest dream? To create something good, to create something great. Okay. Watch. This is my neutral. Is he allowing himself to do that? Because of this fear. Now, look, when you're little and you love your grandpa, it can come down to something literally as simple as, um, well, like my daughter, she asked her daddy to go play baseball because that was their thing together. And that's where he had his heart attack. So when I get people to do what I want to do and love, they die. We've worked on that belief with her for years. So what you want to know is that when you go as far as you can go into the biggest dream you can dream, you get there and everybody, including you, is happy and healthy and safe and secure. There's something else though, there's something else. I can feel it's right. Is it on the sheets? Another core belief? I know we're out of time, but this page. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I do not have permission to love who I am. Sounds that hit. <laughs> yeah. You got that, didn't you? I do not have permission to love who I am. And guys, if we don't love ourselves first and put ourselves first, which none of us have ever been taught to do. How can we love everyone in our world and the world as much as we want to love it? Because we aren't experiencing being that love for ourselves. Does this resonate with you? Yeah. Okay. My what work is here it? is done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. That. Thank was you, amazing. Dee. That was incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're you welcome. you are the brightest light. <laughs> <laughs> you are the brightest, <laughs> biggest light. And when you smile, <laughs> everything glows in a room. Oh, Barbara, it's true. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Okay, I know that um, you guys have more to discuss. So uh, I'm gonna leave. That's the end of my. Sidebar segment. You're going to poof out of here now? I'm going to poof out. I I'm going to go and lay down. <laughs> and then I'm going to wake up and say positively what I want. And I'm going to be able to marry my work life and my yeah. home life. And it's going to be good together. I know I know it can be. It's my belief. From no. My, yeah. I know it is. I know it is. Yes. Yeah. It is definitely my. Right now. Right you're now creating it. Is. it. In this moment, I am. I'm saying it to you guys. Okay. Love you. Love you. See you later. Oh. Well, easy come, easy go, huh? I, guess you're in. <laughs> I didn't want her anymore. <laughs> I always no, want her. Just kidding. <laughs> Is there anything that you have found personally difficult to love that maybe you should love more, or that anything oh, that you personally sure. feel politics. like you need to work on? Politics. Oh, politics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. I will not go into detail. <laughs> <coughs> Barbara's sitting over there laughing. <laughs> um, but yeah, when, when we're confronted with something that in our judgment and estimation is obviously 
bad and dangerous. We go into judgment, we go into reaction, and we go out of creation. Mm -hmm. So, and you can see this happening through politics. They go out of their way to get your attention. And that's where all the focus is on. And that's what the press focuses on, right? And whatever you focus on, you create more of. That's brain science. Mm -hmm. That's also spirituality. Mm -hmm. In the good book, it says, think only on these things. Yeah. Love, peace, joy, happiness. Because what you think on, that's where your focus goes. Then you're directing the energy with your focus, and then it comes more into your life. So it's an, that's an interesting way to like frame it. I kind of for a long for a long time I used to like constantly be wish. I w I'm a big like numbers person, so uh -huh. I see the numbers and I like would make a wish or whatever. You know, like a lot of hippy dippy. Okay, a lot of like people do. That's but, directing energy, right? But I would always for a long time I would go. Like, I want to have this. I want this so bad. I want this to work out. You know, I wish I, it never does. And I wish it would work out for me. And I started shifting that where I stopped wishing for things. Oh, yeah. And I just started saying, show me how good it can get. I just started shifting. I started doing that when I moved out here. Okay. And energetically, can you feel the difference within you about, it, around it what that does? just how you're phrasing it. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. Well, but how you're phrasing it is also a direction to how you're feeling mm -hmm. about it, right? Yeah. So again, coming from here, coming from here, you're directing energy uh, instead of going, I know it's not happening, but I wish it would, uh -huh. is saying to the universe, I know it's not happening, Yeah. but show me how good it can get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's like, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, like, I love that. Ask the universe to play with me. Like, Oh, for sure. Show me what this life can be like because it's so brief, you know? Mm -hmm. I just want to. Sometimes, like this morning, it felt pretty long. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fire truck in your driveway. <laughs> I'm going, oh, Barbara's going to kill me if I'm late. <laughs> no, we were running behind today. It was fine. It was totally fine. I, I guess, like, did, has that shifted in, in how you approach your, your creative work, too, your filmmaking work, or the, the roles you call in, or just how you tap into characters? Well, what's interesting is that I learned it in my acting first. Huh. I knew it when I was a child, uh -huh. and I experienced it as a child. When I started acting, I found my mentor, Charles Conrad, who taught a very controversial new way of acting back then in the 80s. And um, it was, we were never allowed to study a script, uh, break down anything. We were never allowed to do a scene that we knew. You were only allowed to read it one time. And then you get your energy Re and I mean really high, and you throw it onto the werewolf or the rabid dog or the little boy or uh -huh. whomever yeah. you're working with. And what that does is it opens up a channel. Mm -hmm. So Carl Weathers, Suzanne Summers, a lot of amazing people that went on to have great careers were in this class. And we would marvel every class, uh, what would happen and how people would channel stuff about uh, the material that wasn't in the material. Uh, Charles stopped me one time uh, uh, about five or six lines in and he, D. Wallace, you know you're not supposed to ever do a scene in this class that you know. I went, because, oh, Charles, it could be very intimidating. I said, Charles, I swear to God, I don't know what this scene is. I don't know what it's from. And he stopped and looked at me, and he said, 
it's about a cripple girl, and it's not in the scene. So why are you limping hmm. if you don't know that stuff like that would happen? Hmm. Like this thing I just did with Chrissy. Uh huh. I read it and I just couldn't read it without a southern accent. <laughs> Every time I did it, I just saw her like this, and this is who she was. And it, I don't know where it came from. I didn't decide to do it that way. It just, I didn't break down anything in Cujo. You couldn't break down anything in Cujo. It was impossible. <laughs> you just had to be in every moment and prayed you got through. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. In E.T., um, at the uh, dinner table scene, at the end when he looks at me and he says, he's in Mexico with Sally, Right. I felt all these tears coming up, and I thought as Mary, I don't want the kids to see me cry, so I got up and left the table, which was not in the script, and Stephen wasn't particularly happy, <laughs> and he came over to me and he said, why did you get up and leave? And I explained to him what happened, and he looked at me and he turned around and he said, all right, guys, you've got 30 minutes. I need you to build a wall with the kitchen sink and running water. You got 30 minutes. So he could pick me up and take me over to the sink mm. and bring me wow. back into that big close up where I say he hates Mexico. <laughs> and it just, it happened because it happened. Yeah. Not, and that, I think, is where the magic happens on every set is when a director gives you, he trusts you and himself to let things happen, mm -hmm. to bring in ideas. He would tell the, the kids all the time, well, what would you do? What would you, if, if this was your room, what would you do with all these toys and going through them? You know, and they come up with what they do, which is what you want. You want it to look like you're just peeking into a hole. Yeah, it and needs to watching. Be the truth. Yeah, and but you have to have trust and you have to have uh, openness, right? Uh, of of willing, being willing to tap dance in that world of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened. Um, when I did Tan with Blake Edwards. Same thing happened when I did The Frighteners with Peter Jackson. Just stuff happened that led to an amazing moment on film. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. That <laughs> excites me. So <laughs> Sometimes um, I just stand back and go, okay, whatever my character's name is, just take me on the ride. But you have to have very high energy to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, this gets in the way. Uh, this has been like, I'm going to start. We, we talk about different exercises that we're going to add. We're dream journaling. <laughs> now we're going to have to start going through our limiting beliefs and mm -hmm. figuring out what's next and well, reframing. Let me know where I can send my new book, Born, Giving Birth to a New You. It literally writes out the formula of everything. Is that, that out can, now or is yeah. it It's out. out soon. You can okay. get it Where on can, Amazon. And it's so easy to read, guys. It's really easy. It's just like I talk. <laughs> well. That's not an easy thing to do when writing. It, yeah. It's <laughs> not when yeah. you're writing about, you know, what a lot of people think is a complicated thing, which in reality, creation process is so easy mm -hmm. it's so easy but we believe that it's hard and as you believe it's delivered to you as you believe that's how your life shows up so again if you're not getting what you want in your life look at what your beliefs are behind that we will we will definitely do that if people want to work with you where can they find you I am 
dwallace.com. <laughs> you <Yep>. are. <laughs> I do uh, three or four privates a day uh -huh. all across the world, webinars. I, I told Barbara the other day I could do this work 24 7. Amazing. It feeds you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feeds you. Well, you are D. Wallace. Yes. We are Scream Tree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, we are. Um, if you liked what you listened to today, please subscribe, tell your friends, write in, let us know how this made you feel. I mean, it's been such a therapeutic day for us. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, until next time, uh, this has been our, our Scream Dreams with D. Wallace. I'm Catherine Corcoran. And I'm James A. Janice. This and be don't. sure to leave the light on. You did it! <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs>so much to everybody who's listened to scream dreams who's liked and subscribed and a very 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 special thank you to our early patreon members right now we have an early bird tier it will not be that way forever but for all of you who've signed on so far becca bartlett rue cal mike devine carl harrison patrick smith who else we got here we got uh, Lenny Laser Discs. Oh, I thought it was Lenny Laser Dicks, and that's why you gave it to me. No, it's <laughs> Lenny Laser Discs. Thank you, Lenny, Jacob Schneider, Blood D. Jacob, Kate G., Kiss My Flapjack, huh? John Haruza, Kelly Bender, Philip Susan, Cameron Baker, Mark Stewart, and Matthew Kane. Matthew Scott Kane. That's my buddy from college. Is it really? Yeah. Matthew Scott Kane. Thank yeah. you so much. And uh, current uh, showrunner. He sold the show. He's great. Yeah. He's your showrunner for Dead Meat? No, no. For oh. a real show. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's a uh, good job, Matt. Matt good proud of you, man. Hell yeah. He was our very first one. <gasps> no shit. Wow. Thanks, Matt. And everyone else. Everyone else is equally as important. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. We so appreciate it. Please stay tuned. We're going to be doing more on the Patreon. And for everyone who just jumped on the early bird bandwagon, we really, really appreciate you guys. We are Scream Dreams. You are amazing dreamers. Remember to leave the light on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>